Welcome to season two, episode 60 of Duck and COVID. 60, yeah, 60. We getting old, yo. But you know what? You can teach this old dog new tricks. And speaking of old dogs, let's bring these two others into the studio. Dunk, Matt, how you guys doing? Ah, well, you know, it's Monday, so... <laughs> you know, I worked through all this effort to give like a pumping intro and then... It's just... <laughs> Just another Monday in a totalitarian state. Nothing. nothing <laughs> right. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Has the government gazetted how I should feel? Because I mean, I don't know how to feel. Am I allowed to be happy? Is uh, am I allowed to have feelings? Am I allowed to think about things? Um, you know, I just, just think. Just, I, I, I your, think all just the, go have your bread ration and be happy. Yeah, um, look, at the end of the day, back to the gulag tomorrow morning, you know, right <laughs> in, but in, you know, just... <laughs> back to the old, uh, back to the I'm old glad, sweatshop. I'm, 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 I'm glad we're taking this all well and, 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 you know, as, as adults <laughs> and grown ups. Can I, can I just say one thing though? If there's a person that I feel hell of a sorry for, it's for Doug who does the news. Because the problem is with being a news guy is you have to give the news. And the news is shit. Right? <laughs> we don't have the news. So no matter which way we try and play this off, Doug has to sit here and spoon feed us all the horse shots that was dished up to us in the past 24 hours. So my thoughts and prayers, Doug, my people are thinking of you. <laughs> thinking of that, let's go over to Doug with the news and see what he's got for us. <laughs> And now, the news with Doug. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the news on Duck and COVID on this Monday night, stage 4.2 of lockdown. Uh, we'll start, as always, with the, uh, with the statistics. Uh, the weekend saw an increase of just over 650,000 new cases, just under 200,000 of them yesterday, bringing the global total to just over 13.1 million. Of those, 4.9 million people are currently active with coronavirus, and just over 7.6 people have recovered from the virus. Uh, the current number of reported deaths stand at just under 573,000, with the current global mortality rate remaining at 7%. South Africa, however, um, saw an increase of just under 38,000 cases over the weekend, 12,000 of them only yesterday. That brings us up to 276,242 officially confirmed cases. This is an important number because it means that we have managed to jump four places in the world ranking. That's right. We are now the number 10 spot for the COVID pandemic. Um, Moving on, uh, the number of active cases currently stands at 137,000 odd cases, with 134,000 people having recovered. And unfortunately, the weekend saw 359 people recorded dead as a result of COVID over the weekend, bringing us to over 4,000 with 4,079 cases. But our mortality rate has decreased to 2.94%. All right. The, uh, moving on, the International Pentecost Holiness Church was involved in a hostage situation over the weekend involving a splinter group of the church and a battle over its leadership uh, in Zirbikom. The situation turned bloody when congregates allegedly attacked people who were inside, indicated that they were coming to take over the premises. Five people have been killed and more than 40 suspects, including members of various security forces involved in the siege, have been arrested. The police's Vishnaidu said that four men were shot in a vehicle and a fifth man, apparently a security official, was shot and killed in his vehicle as well. Police have arrested for over 40 suspects and have recovered over 30 firearms. As the situation unfolded, the recovery of firearms uh, is still busy fluctuating and they believe they shall find more. 
The members of the security force involved in the security forces include members of the SAPS and the South African National Defense Force, among others. Naidu said hostage negotiators managed to defuse the situation. However, the leaders of the church have blamed the security force for the poor handling of the situation and the lack of arrests. All I have to say is how very Waco. Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs and Courses Honoured Lamini Zuma is applying for leave to appeal the ruling which declared six of the Alert Level 3 regulations invalid, even though these regulations were not in existence when the court heard the matter. These include the regulations pertaining to the limiting of exercise, funerals, the closure of beaches and public parks, and the declaration of the contravention of certain disaster regulations and criminal offence. No doubt she figures if she can push squirrel, or squirrel around, she can do the same with the courts. South Africa's alcohol industry has said it was blindsided by government's immediate reinstatement of the alcohol ban, uh, the ban on alcohol, warning of a dire economic impact due to likely job losses in the industry. In a joint statement, the National Liquor Traders Council, South, uh, South African Liquors Brand Owners Association, SELBA, the Beer Association of South Africa, VINPRO, and the Liquor Traders Association of South Africa said they were shocked and disappointed. They added that restricting legal alcohol sales will lead to the growth of illicit alcohol tra uh, trade, of the illicit alcohol trade. The controversial tobacco ban, which has been in place since the start of lockdown, has similarly sparked fierce debates over a loss of tax revenue and the creation of a demand for the illicit trade feel as though the government won't be happy until they have made criminals out of all of us. Bungling in Edendale Hospital, nurses resulted uh, in, sorry, bungling in Edendale Hospital, nurses, uh, I do apologize, bungling in Edendale Hospital resulted in an Impendlier family spending sums of money preparing for a funeral only to discover that their relative was still alive. The Duma family, who were left traumatized by the ordeal, even went to the extent of generating a death certificate for Mervis Duma, aged 90, after nurses at the hospital told them she had died. Duma's son, Swisiso, said the family had to start funeral arrangements despite the fact that the relatives had not been shown her body. Duma, who is diabetic, had been admitted to the hospital last week after her sugar levels had dropped. On Wednesday, nurses informed the family that she had died. When the nurses eventually realized they had made a blunder, they told the family to go to Home Affairs and cancel the death certificate. Spasiso said he did not know whether to celebrate, as the whole episode had left the family in shock. I dare say I understand what he means. I mean, yay, mother is alive. Oh, bugger, I just spent 30 grand on a coffin. Huh. 25, moving on from the, from the dead to, uh, to, the, to the living, a wedding. 25 people have tested positive for COVID-19 in Kwazulu Natal after attending a wedding in contravention of lockdown laws. Kwazulu Natal residents have since been urged to adhere to the lockdown regulations after the event which took place last week. Premier Sikhe Zikalala made the plea on Sunday as he gave an update on the pandemic in the province. He noted with concern the number of infections that had been recorded as a result of social gatherings. And finally, President Squirrel Ramaphosa came out of hiding on Sunday night to make an announcement to all South Africans not affected by load shedding. In the announcement, he declared that additional regulations would be put in place, including a new alcohol ban, a new curfew between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m., and declaring that it is now a criminal offense if you don't wear a mask in public. It should, however, be noted that taxis are allowed to fill their taxis to the brim so long as they crack a window open. This clearly shows that the government is too weak to police the tax association and too cowardly to even try. These regulations were all introduced and President Squirrel scurried back into his hole before load shedding was suspended. The nation now waits for the real leader of the country, of course, Zana Lamini Zuma, to let us know what the hell is actually going on. And that's all the time we have for you. Back to the studio. That was the news with Doug. Well, well, well. Welcome, Doug. That was a yeah, that was interesting are. noise to welcome us back into the studio. <laughs> it sounded yeah. like the earth had moved. <laughs> well, oh, how is everybody? It's fine. Monday. I see you've all uh, got your you pretty know. tattoos uh, lined up for uh, for next week, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's going to be of a daisy. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know. Like I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> so yeah. Um new new regulations, no alcohol, um, still no cigarettes. I mean it's it's not even 
we're, we're not even living in the Middle East. Yeah, like, well, it's, guys, yeah. it's, 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 I hmm. think we're the only country in the world that has now uh, had a double alcohol ban that isn't um, a Sharia law country, to be honest. Like, we're the only mm. one in the world. Um, I, we have a, I, There's a lot that I can say about this topic. Uh, I probably will be, never be hired by any company again after this podcast. Because <laughs> I, um, no, look, I, I'm going to put it out there tonight, if it's, if it's, if it's okay, if, if that's what you guys want to discuss tonight, because I think that um, we've been pushed to the edge. I, th I think that we, we don't live in a country that's democratic anymore. I think all your rights have been taken away from you and you are a child to a government that's authoritarian and um, they're actually loving life at the moment. They're loving it. They are loving every moment of this. Well, she actually said I in her speech agree. today, like, no, no more living your best life. Um, it's, it is interesting, though, because, I mean, I think their hand is forced in a way because of the fact that all these alcohol-related um, cases are happening, are occurring in hospitals. Um, and I, I think it's quite a tricky, quite a tricky like road to, to walk. Sir, I would like to just just point out first off that the the alcohol-related incidents in hospitals, yes, they they make up for between thirty and fifty percent of casualty, casualty, right? Okay. The problem mm. with with that is that if you've got COVID nineteen, you're not going into casualty. You're going to hospital, right? Mm. You're going in to away from casualty. It's it's got nothing to do with casualty. I mean, yes, you may have a few people going to casualty, but most are going to be going through to get themselves admitted for oxygen or something like that. It's not going to be necessity casualty. Added to that, a 9 p.m. curfew, right? Okay, seriously, if you're if you're drinking and driving before 9 p.m., right? Well, you know, seriously, mm -hmm. you should be arrested. That, that's a policing issue. You know, none of these actual regulations, particularly this, this alcohol relate regulation, is in any way going to actually help prevent the spread of the virus. I just want to quickly yeah. uh, chime in or echo, echo exactly what Doug said. So there's a doctor that I follow on Twitter. He's a South African doctor. I'm not going to say his name for the time being. But he tweeted mm. earlier, he said, in case you don't know, COVID-19 is a medical condition, not a surgical one. That means that physicians and specialists who deal with acute critical care are busy right now. For the most part, GPs, surgeons, and other medical specialists have been twiddling their thumbs for months now, which is exactly the thing. Is mm. these, these stories they say, the, 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 the one thing is you have to take into account for um, – uh, for the most part, when you deal with governments, they know exactly how to put gold leaf on stuff to make it look pretty. The end of the day, uh, at the end, at the end of all of this, um, what I was trying to say now is, he basically said we're staying in level three, but all the things that we've been told is exactly the same as what we went through in level five. He just prettied everything that was said. Yep. It's and, and when he's talking about, uh, you know, we don't have medical people. You know, we, we're, we're bursting at the seams. I'm, I'm, I've heard from so many different people that are in the medical industry and in the medical field saying, I don't know where the, the, this is happening. Obviously, these are different. I just want to make just a very clear point that these are both people that work in government hospitals as well as in, uh, in the private sector. So I don't know mm -hmm. where these like, speeches are coming from. It's all just fear mongering, in my opinion, to a large extent to justify what they're doing. Absolutely. And it's, it, I mean, I think it is fear mongering. And, and it also, it goes against all the other stuff that they've been saying to us for weeks that they had enough time to prepare during the five week hard lockdown. So they're all ready to go for this. All right. They're, mm. The other thing they've been saying is that the lockdown was never intended to stop the spread of the virus. This was their initial statement. It's not intended to stop the spread of the virus. It's intended to give, to slow it down, to give our hospitals time to prepare for the influx. That is what they said. And they said that all the provinces except the Eastern Cape had done so. So, I just have mm -hmm. one. I just want to add to this as well. Uh, just regarding Cyril's speech last night, never in the history of me being um, a 32 year old guy watching speeches from different countries, presidents and other people in politics. Have I ever seen a president not take any any sort of blame for the actions that have happened? And he blamed the people. How dare you stand up in front of an entire nation and look into a TV and tell me that I'm to blame? At no point did they mm -hmm. take any sort of anything from it saying we made a, we made an error. Everything that he said was all about the people. You guys didn't do this. The party goers, you, you, you. At some point, mm -hmm. these guys need to take responsibility. The ANC is not accountable for anything. It's 26 years. They've not been accountable for a single damn thing. Here's the problem. When do they, when do they stop blaming us? What the hell did we do? 
the people are out there fighting for their lives to get a piece of bread on the table to feed their family. But no, no, no. They've just stopped an entire another sector of the economy. Let's throw that sector down as well. Let's get more people unemployed. I would like to point out what you just said, that people are struggling to get bread on their table. And that's that, that's what these regulations effectively are. If you're living comfortably in a in a middle class neighborhood, you, know, you generally have a higher paying job. You can get to work and from work in your car. You're relatively safe and you can lock down relatively com comfortably in a large space. But what they've do, done instead is they said, OK, we're not going to limit the number of people in taxis. You can fill your taxi right up, fill it up, right? Okay, you'll be bursting so long as you crack a window slightly. All those people, they're the poorest of the poor. They can't afford to take off work. So they get into the taxi, right, which they have to. They can't say, no, I don't want to be in a full taxi because then nothing happens. So they get into full taxi. They catch COVID. They go to work. They go home. They're, they're living in uh, lower, lower income places, townships where there's seven people living in a room by two by two meter wide. So they can't self-isolate, which they're now stuck in between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. anyway. So what they're effectively done. This is an attack on the poor. They are forcing COVID into the poor areas and then locking the people in there. And of course, if you live in a nice area, you don't see the SANDF. If you live in a shit area, like a township, then you see the SANDF. So you are surrounded by armed guards. I suppose the, the elder generation will probably be sitting there going, oh, this is just like the 70s. The difference is now we are going to die here. It's, 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 it's come to a point now where I, 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 I agree with Doug because at the end of the day, we're sitting here on the internet having a podcast, you know, in a middle class. I'm in my own room. It, it is what it is. And the problem is that they're taking away from the people that need the most. It's, it's, it's all well and games for us to sit and kick up our feet like Karens. I can sit here and Karen as much as I want. This doesn't have anything to do with me. It's got to do with the amount of people that are going to be jobless at the end of this. And on the point that you made about the taxis, the reason why they're in the position that they are, the taxi, and obviously as it's referred to online, the taxi mafia as, as, as it is, the reason is they didn't bend the knee. Yes. When all these regulations originally came out, the taxi mafia bound together and they went, you know what? Fuck your rules and fuck your plans because we're not going to abide by them. What happened to the government? They flip-flop so much that they can't control them. The, if, if everyone sort of approached this whole thing as the taxis did and the people that uh, ran the taxi sort of ranks and and the owners of taxis if we did the same thing we wouldn't be forced into like, this little sort of nursery school that we're in a nursery school the democracy so to speak because the, look at every single thing that was commented on stops everyone except the taxis which yeah. is interesting why why every single why the taxi why is the taxi sort of uh, side of the economy completely free of anything because those rules are ridiculous i mean i have to sit by myself uh, in my house self-isolate can't see my family can't do anything but if i went and invested in a taxi a quantum i could go pick up every family member drive around the neighborhood a hundred times and chat to them it, it's it's nonsensical and that's as the problem you crack the window open. Oh, sorry and wear masks so mm. that's the, that's my mm. biggest problem with this whole thing they never bent the knee nobody in the taxi uh in, in the whole taxi industry bent the knee and that's why they are free of any sort of thing because they know the rest of us won't m make any sort of i, I don't want to say violent protests or anything of the sort because i don't want to incite anything no, no, but that's we don't what want protests all we Not want is yeah. to do what they did when they try to force the e-tails on us the people said uh no Right? Yeah. They didn't go and burn anything. They didn't go and destroy anything. No. They just said, no, we won't do it. And as a result, the ETOLs are effectively debunked. Nobody actually gives a shit about them. You know, yeah, no, I can get a piece of paper every month, yeah. But nobody's actually doing anything about it. Nobody gives a stuff. And if that's all we did, if, if South Africans are just like, uh, no, that's not going to happen. We're not going to sit around and be pushed around anymore. Eventually, the government will be forced to go, well, what are we going to do? Arrest the whole country? Well, that's the thing, like you said in the news, well, systematically as, one by one we, making us criminals. That's exactly what you said in the news. Well, the 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 long and the short of it, though, is as well as that. At the end of the day, you can you can talk the leg off a dog, but at the, you're responsible for yourself. Um, mm -hmm. We're we're in the midst of the shitstorm, guys. Uh, and if people want to, if people if if taxi drivers want to load at full capacity um then so be it um but you see, if, it's not if, just if about they... taxi drivers wanting to load a full capacity grant it's not right because 
What it is, is they've allowed taxi drivers to load at full capacity, which means that the poor are most at risk of catching this virus. Okay, And if you use a taxi, you don't have a choice because you go to the taxi rank mm -hmm. and you've got 10 taxis in a row, right? You can't go to the front one, see that it's full and say, no, I don't want to get on that taxi because the guy behind yeah. you won't get you into his taxi. He says, no, you've got to fill that one up first, right? Okay, yeah. so, so they don't yeah. even have a choice in their transport, right? It's, it's not just about that the taxis are doing what they want. No, it's about the fact that these regulations have threatened the lives of those who are most in need of government protection. Hmm. I right. see there's a message from, okay? from Facebook. Can I throw a curveball? If you can save one life from COVID-19 by having a bed available to them and not alcohol-related, which you can prevent, shouldn't that be the right thing? I mean, she does make a fair point. I mean, Absolutely. yes, they come into Absolutely. casualty, but they, they might end up in the ICU, like, for instance, if it's a bad car accident. Um, and I think that's also probably, like, one of the reasons why they're doing it. Uh, but the government has told us very clearly that they've got more than enough beds. They've told yeah, us that beds are not the problem. The problem the, the now is thing, they're saying they're ventilators and the casualties. That that's I, what they said. The, the other thing that I just wanted to harp on, because uh, this is sort of one of those debates, like if you can save one, should everyone else sort mm. of, you know, abide? And I, and I agree with that to, the, to a large extent. Mm. But this this thing, take the alcohol away just for one second, because mm. the, the alcohol is just an extension of people not getting jobs. So the whole alcohol industry, so we're talking about the South African wine industry, which is hundreds of thousands of people, South African breweries, which I think is millions of people almost uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not just talking about like the people that actually work in the thing. I'm talking about people that are, are in, you know, the sales of it and then bars themselves. So it's a, it's a, it's a very big step process. So now the question comes in where would you save one life to make sure that 100,000 people get to live in poverty? That's the other argument that I've been hearing thrown around because it's easy enough to say like, oh, it's easy to save one bed, but what about everyone else that's not going to be able to live because they're going to die of starvation because they can't get a job? So, you know, it's, it's, it's this like weird argument where people that, are saying, oh, you're a right winger if you think that, you're a lefty if you think that, whatever the case is. But I mean, that's a very good yeah, point. Yeah. And it goes back to a story that, uh, that we covered in the news uh, right after we started going live, very early on, um, you know, I think it was in the, the tweens of our... Um, of season two, where a, a study was done on the, 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 the years lost, not necessarily the lives lost, but the years lost. And it said that you know, just in the first five week lockdown, you know, the, the number of years that people had lost in the lower parts of the community, those people who were on the poverty line, those people who were getting malnutrition and that sort of thing, they were on average losing you know, between three and five years of their lives. So where they generally would live to say 50, they were now only going to be living to between 48 and 45. So if you take a nationwide and you look at how those lives have been shortened as a result of mm -hmm. the lasting health effects that are going to result from the poverty that is caused by destroying these industries, you're actually doing yeah. more harm. Good. I think it's a little bit premature, though, to start be starting to make projections 20, 30 years into the future. I mean, you know, they, they have said, you know, the scientific community has come out and said that we can't give you conclusive proof that vaping is good or bad for you because there just hasn't been the time to, 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 to study that kind of effect. But they um, can't tell we need to be very careful about throwing around numbers. Can I talk? I've sat here yes, and listened. I'm sorry. going to talk now. Sorry, Dad. We need to be very yeah. careful about throwing around numbers and facts and statistics and things that haven't had a time to to really go anywhere. Um, we're th we, we get bombarded by facts and figures and opinions and news stories from all over the place all the time. Speaking as someone who thinks that um, South Africa in general has a huge, massive drinking problem that hasn't been addressed and that is not being addressed. And yes, of course, there are multiple societal, cultural problems that, that go into that. And, and cutting off people from, from alcohol is not necessarily the right way to deal with those problems. But we are, let's not forget, in the middle of a pandemic. Mm. The world is in it the is. middle of a pandemic. And let's look at what's interesting, 
and we're fast approaching them in terms of, you know, population to number of infections, is what's going on in America. They peaked, mm -hmm. thought they'd gotten over it, opened up everything, relaxed everything, and now they're way back up in there again. Yeah, they're peaking again. It's, it's a problem. Um, it, it reminds me of the, the trolley problem, you know, like... Do you let the trolley go and kill the five people or do you pull the lever and sidetrack it and kill a person on purpose to save five other people? Um, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I am a realist and a pessimist at the good of, at the best of times. Um, I can get really bitter about life, but I also choose to try and imagine that people are doing the best that they can. Now like I, I, I know that that opinion doesn't sit well, but also we must take into effect that this the last time we had a world problem of these kind of proportions was arguably World War II, where, where, where a population, an Earth population, that have basically become complacent in our comfortableness. Comfortability? Comfort I can't think of the right word. Comfort. But, our comfort yeah. that's yeah. the right word there we go it's it's um, comfort, i'll blame man. being bilingual i know cool but anyway i think we've gotten too used to being comfortable um i, think... I, I remember once when i was um last year i was on tour in germany and i was speaking to somebody and um he was saying yeah the news has been dominated by the subways and i say why you know what what's going on he's like no everyone's complaining because the subways are one minute behind um, and he's like, do you have that? Do you have that in your country? And I'm like, no, because people burn the trains here if they arrive yeah. at all. Um, and I think it's very much just the thing of guys, we have to take into effect that this virus is coming. We're, we're hitting the peak now. And I understand, I, I understand your views and your thoughts. Um, you know, yes, the taxi it, it seems like the taxi industry is calling the shots in all. I mean, I, I can't say for sure because it's not, I'm, I'm not a political person. I'm, I'm an entertainer. Um, but it seems to me that we are in unprecedented times and we're only going to know two years t from now, what the major mistakes were because this this disease has blindsided the planet. It's the first thing that everyone has done something to, you know, whether it be quarantine or, or you know, so it's, it, we've never experienced something at this level. And it's, it's really hard to say what should and shouldn't be done because we're only going to know two years from now oh. when, when the curve has risen and fallen and we have tallied the numbers and we get a vaccine and all that stuff. I do say that, we that's have, my two cents anyway. But I want to say that we have Fair experienced point. something like this before. We have. The, the, the 1919 pandemic, the Spanish flu, was just like this, right? It was a global, was a global. flu pandemic that mm, wiped out millions. We knew what it was. We, we, we know it, right? And we saw the mistakes, right? Okay, now I'll tell you what we can we can definitely say, and I, don't get me wrong, right? I'm not saying that I've got all the answers either, but I can tell you that banning alcohol is not going to make any bloody difference, all right? Not that it really matters, right? But it's the industry that matters, okay? The mm. the the long the long the long felt effects of this, and Matt, you say we can't use statistics, we can't use numbers for things we don't know yet. We've been using statistics and numbers for decades. We I get said told, we need to we be very told. careful. No, no, I he did. He and, said and be, be careful about it, Jim. Yeah. I agree. Be careful. Okay, I'm sorry. We need to be careful. No, I, I agree. But we've been told for, for decades by scientists that if we don't stop using greenhouse gases tomorrow, then all the uh, then all the, 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 the cliffs are going to melt away and, and everything's, you know, the, the, the whole world is going to end up as a dust desert, right? Global warming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you know, people ignore it. And people take it very seriously, right? Okay, nobody yeah. has the, 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 the perfect solution, but that doesn't mean we can just disregard the numbers that are being given to us, right? And we should be looking at the long-term effects or the estimated long-term effects of what this is going to do. And poverty and the resultant poverty, right, on this is going to be dramatic. We also need to take into account of the society we live in. 
And the society simply, simply, we can say this, and that is that in a society where you have people who are able to self-isolate in safety and in comfort and a security net where they will be able to feed themselves, you can quarantine, you can lock down. But as uh, leading academics, and I will see if I can find some of their names, have stated lockdown doesn't work in Africa because Africa has societies and uh, like townships where it is not possible to keep separate from those around you. And we should be looking at ways to, because we can't stop it, we've got to accept that, to mitigate the worst of what's going to happen. And locking yeah. people in their houses, right, and filling up taxis, right, and stopping people having a drink at the end of the day, they're not going to help. Um, I just want to say one thing. I do enjoy the fact that we have four completely different views about this, which does make it a lot easier than just having a... And, and no, no, look, because the problem with these conversations are they, they tend to become echo chambers where everyone's just sitting there and like stroking themselves yeah. and their own egos with an idea. Mm -hmm. The one thing I just wanted to say, just, just sort of to argue with you a little bit, Grant, is my problem, and, and I see a lot of the comments coming through saying like this alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. The point isn't about the alcohol ban. Obviously, we're talking about jobs. The alcohol ban, my whole thing is, like with the self-isolation thing, the alcohol ban, all of these things combined, my biggest problem is, is it's going to create a precedent in the country. So this is just one one time that they go, we can do this, and people have, ab have abide, abided by these rules. It's small things like this. When people start taking away your small liberties, you start having to wonder about things. So like the next time there's a in inverted commas pandemic, there was a pandemic like 2011, swine flu or H1N1. Mm -hmm. It was a real pandemic. It was all over the world. There was like three cases in South Africa and there were a lot more after that. A friend of mine caught swine flu in 2015. The point of mine is twice. that if... Yeah, you see, there you go. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, the problem is, is that... It, when it sets a precedent like this, every time something of this sort of scale, magnitude, or whatever happens, they've now tried. They're going to do the same thing, even if it's minor or major. It's given. It's mm. given control. It's, I just think at times the government has too much control now over the people. The things that were said last yeah. night are incredibly, incredibly. They're way too sort of jaunted all over the place i don't understand how on earth you can have a full taxi full of people of course these people need to get to work and we, I, I have my own car so i can't really complain they need to get to work but then how the fuck can you tell me you're allowed to go to a casino like get out of here mm. how like how how is this even like a logical step so okay cool you can't get alcohol you have to you have to be in your house at nine o'clock at night that's not how a free country lives i mean uh, maybe I'm wrong, but a fucking casino can be open, mate. I can go with whatever I, I have left and go and put my, you know what? Life is shit right now. I'm going to put my entire savings that I have left on black. If it rolls in, good for me. I can live for another four months. If it doesn't, you know what? It's a four-story building is how a lot of people approach situations like this. Times like mm. these are dark. The, you need to start yeah. alleviating things that cause even more darkness. And a bloody casino, mate, is a one-way ticket for people to do bad things. I'm just saying yeah. that there's a I lot mean, of coordination. I, I completely gamble responsibly. I, I, That's I upsetting me so much. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, and look, I'm, I'm by no means trying to argue here that um, the regulations and and the things that the government have come out with uh, make any sense uh, in their entirety. Um, I think that some things do make a modicum of sense, and I agree with you that we need to be very, very watchful about like where this leads us in terms of a democracy. My Correct. issues come is that if, if, uh, if we were to ban um, um, the, 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 the um, you know, if we were, were to stop allowing people to go into casinos or to stop allowing people to travel on business, then it would be the hospitality industry that we'd be having the conversation about job losses about. No, um, I understand that if completely. We, I just want to say, I don't understand that. Um, so, mm. so, you know, there's like every industry is taking a fucking knock here. You know, I just came from a meeting at work where they were going like, we don't know what percentage of your salaries we can even promise you in the next three months. Um, the, the, the other, the yeah. other, I've, the set other up a bear trap, I've set up a bear trap for you that you've just stepped in, which is a very important, <laughs> thing gonna, which is a very important thing. that's going to come just after you're done. Sus, okay. Duncan. Sus. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
the and the and I and I get it. I mean, I know that the whole alcohol thing, like it's avoidable, putting all of those jobs at risk and it and it and and all of the rest of it. And do I think that we should be exporting alcohol and keeping to keep the wine industry alive? Absolutely. Um, my issue with um, the alcohol thing, and Gareth kind of mentions it, um, is a lot of people, their reaction to the alcohol ban doesn't seem to come from a place of like, I'm concerned yeah. about the jobs. I'm oh, concerned that, that I can't have my bottle anymore. Wow. No, which is, that, that makes that, mm. that's, I know Gareth personally, and he makes a bloody good point there. But the bad trip mm. that I'm talking to you about is in terms of these policies and in terms of the liberties that we have living in a, d a dem democratic country, so to speak, in inverted commas, is the things, if you're going to make laws, they all need to sort of match up with each other. It can't be sort of like a Jackson Pollock painting that you're going, <laughs> this is fine, but this one isn't. This one is, but this one isn't. Like, it doesn't make any sense that you can have a casino open, which is one of the things that causes some of like the most well some atrocities in our country because people go and gamble off their salary every day and are left in poverty and then worse things happen so start going like this going you know what let's take the casino away and find something else that we can do with that none of these things make any sense they don't align with each other which is my problem if you want to make if you want to if you want to start making regulations and rules why on earth can't i play a, a club football game anymore why, why can't i play football Okay, yeah, fair enough. It's a semi-contact sport, but sitting at a bloody, you know, roulette table next to four other people—that's not mm. a that's not a, thing. a guy sitting there wheezing and coughing and and in, in a confined environment. Why can't I? Why did it take so long for me to be able to play golf? None mm. of the stuff makes sense. And the problem is the government themselves are sitting there and making this up as they go along. And it is now becoming completely evident that the original lockdown—I was behind the ANC on this. I thought they did a flipping sterling yeah. job. I think that we had one of the fucking best approaches of any country in the world on March 26, 2020. However, one month later, it all the somebody took the map and threw it away and went, here you go, boys. It's up to you now. And the, since then, one month after that original three-week lockdown, directly after that, I went, there's something I miss here. There's foul play. There's a lot of stuff happening under, where's this 500 billion that we were promised? Where was, where's this? Where's it being used? Where's mm. all these things that they spoke about? There is not a single fucking thread of evidence that our government has mm. given us. That's good. I mean, the best thing we've seen are these ambulance taxis that they had, the ambulance scooters, which is already, I mean, Zoyam has come out saying, I didn't approve this, but he has a tweet up saying he did. There is yeah. no consistency. The consistency yeah. is yeah. lacking, and there and is no alignment. I think I, that I, that is the rub there. As it is like that. I mean, mm. like twenty seven. I, I think he would have struggled on the twenty eighth of March to find someone who wasn't in support of Cyril. You know, uh, we were all calling um, him um, Cyril. And 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 I and I do think the wheels have come off in a big big way. Um, and and I think that 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 is what we should be talking about. I think that that. Um, being melodramatic about alcohol bans distracts from that, and that's my correct. Issue. Mm. But that's what they want. But that's I, I think that that's what they sort of want you to do. Take away some things in South Africa that they don't, because it covers up everything else. All over Twitter, all over Facebook today, everyone's sitting there shitting themselves about alcohol. Mm. Little do you know, they're taking away little liberties from you every single day. There's one thing going away, one thing. But you sitting there on Facebook going, I can't get my fucking bottle of brandy. I can't get my wine. Meanwhile, mm. it's the things underneath that are starting to slowly disappear that you need to keep your eyes on. And that's my biggest problem with this. It's not about the booze itself. Can I tell you something? The black market is going to flourish. People are yeah. going to walk out of this smiling ear to ear. And can I tell you what it's going to be? It's not going to be the people who need the money most. It's not going to be the people that are sitting every day starving to death. It's going to be the rich are going to get richer and the poor are going to get poorer. Simple fact. Just just on that point, so I want to I want to add, Matt, that you, the problem with the problem with this being tailored as an alcohol fight is that it's not really. I don't. I can sit here for the next three, four, five months. Guess what? If I really want it, I can find myself a drink. But honestly, I don't 100%, care. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. But what 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 is as Duncan says is it's it's the the slow removal of the liberties and rights that we have come to enjoy and to the point where we just get used to it oh well but but, but this is what but but That's... like duncan and i were saying it's like the problem is everybody's getting melodramatic about booze and not having that conversation 
Yeah, I'm going to show you something quickly. I'm going to literally show I you wanna... exactly. So, yeah, I just want to show you. I'll put it onto camera. I'm just going to blot, blot out the person's name. This is how easy it is. Literally, as the thing was called last night, I get a message that says that. I don't know whether you can see it. I'm not going to show you the rest of the picture, though. I will send you the price I'll list. I'll send you the price list. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm done. It's, it's, yeah. it's that simple. The guy's going, hey, look, I've got a bunch of stock, and he's sending out to all his mates now. Got a price mm, list. Yeah. Got a price list. You want a price list? I've got stuff. I've got stuff. I've got stuff. One, it's that one thing that uh, one thing that I history wanna... has taught us. And this, Grant, you said, what do we learn from history? One thing that history has taught us, without question, is that prohibition does not work. This is true of the alcohol ban in the nineteen twenties in America. This is true of the drug war the, that Nixon started in the U.S. Yeah. None of it has worked. It's just made it worse. It's made criminals wealthy while the people who have been trying to follow the law end up crunched under the boot of bureaucracy and that yeah. is you know so that is in terms of in terms of the the, the wine argument that's my wine argument prohibition doesn't work yeah. in terms of everything else the simple fact is that we can't stop this virus from happening we can't 100 what we have it's to do take its course. is we have to make sure that we wear our masks and we try and keep safe we have to try and make sure that we don't you know burn down hospitals and clinics in service mm. delivery protests, you know, that, that'd be a good start. We have to make sure that we actually have police on the ground that are doing their jobs in enforcing the laws. And we have to make sure that we don't have military personnel going around killing people because that's what they're trained to do because they're being used mm. as a police force. There was a message that you put up, Grant. Is that what you wanted to discuss? There's, yeah, I'd, I'd quite like to just, uh, I mean, I maybe we can do like one, one a comment each at this, and then I think we should cool. probably yeah. move on. But I, I think, think it's an interesting that. one to leave leave on. Um, mm. Gareth, uh, to, to be honest, I actually think, and I know this is going to be hugely uh, um, unpopular, but I actually think Cyril did a fairly good job in his speech last night. Um, I, it was brought up. It was it was a point that was mentioned to me today. It's like the, the one thing you've got to remember about what he's trying to do is balancing talking to people like us who are well educated, who live mm. in nice houses, who get irritated because uh, I can't have my glass, have glass of Chateau Limitas 2020. We've, we've yeah. been okay. inconvenienced. We've been inconvenienced. We've been we've yeah. been inconvenienced, and he's having to go from that to dealing with the dude who uh, is living in a shack one meter away from the next dude and who needs to get to work to earn a living to just feed his kids. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really, really difficult balancing act to make. Um, the, he did, and, and where I would, would have liked to have seen more of this is in the admission of some of the things that he feels the government has gone wrong. He kind of mentioned it last night. He glossed over it a little bit, though. Um, but he did mention, look, we haven't done everything right. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of acknowledgement about that. And I would have liked mm. to have seen more dealing with some of the other issues like the load shedding that's back. I would have liked to have heard about <laughs> shit like... Um, 13 years, I still haven't been able to sort that one out. Brilliant. I'll never, 13 years of load shedding. Let's yeah, not even get I would, I would have. I would have <laughs> liked to at, at least acknowledge you know, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, that he's living in the same country as us. I would like it acknowledged that uh, Helen Joseph Hospital has been without running water since Friday. Um, I yeah. would like Thursday. those Thursday. kind of things Thursday. I would mm -hmm. like it acknowledged that the police have been erring badly. I would like those kinds of things um, to have been covered. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that, um, you know, for someone who is dealing with a fairly remarkable society in the way that there is some of us who are in, living in a first world and there are some of us who are living in abject poverty. Um, I, I do think, I think that he's being undermined a lot by the rest of his ministers, but I think that in, in to a large degree, he pretty did, he did, I think, a relatively good job. Anyway, that's my yeah. So Sorry, guys, I just, I need to start putting in time here because we're going to start <laughs> running out. So, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Dunk, can you give us in two minutes or less what you would do different? 
I'll do it one minute. I, I would have left things as they were for the most part, right? But if you want to really start being strict on the countries, you start taking away things that are needed. So I would have said that private hospitals need to join join the ranks of this COVID thing. If you have capacity in a private hospital to do it, start separating. Rather start planning for where the problem is. So I understand the government hospitals are full. I would have started making more rules that affect private hospitals that they need to jump in and help people that obviously can't afford the private health care. That's to help the virus itself. I would have kept the economy starting to slowly take over. A 10% contraction is being um, sort of spoken about. Means lots of people are going to lose their jobs. By stopping more people working, you, you don't help anything. Um, alcohol ban, if we're going to just quickly hop on that one, I would have said that's fine. I wouldn't have banned it myself, but I would have uh, lowered it down to only being able to get booze one day a week or something like that. So people still mm -hmm. have their rights to get what they want. Um, but the problem with that is that everyone rushes and then you have no social distancing anyway. It's much of a muchness, but I can still go and do that at, at, at my local supermarket every day anyway. Um, there's just there's a lot to be said. But at the end of the day, I would have I, I also would have been a bit more empathetic and apologized for a lot of things that the ANC did wrong. And I would have maybe taken a bit of blame. He didn't take any and I wouldn't have blamed the people for the problem. That's what I would have. I wouldn't have blamed the citizens. Cool. And, and Doug? I wasn't actually able to watch the speech itself. All of the stuff that I've seen has been read because, uh, and Matt, they have stopped load shedding. It's now called load reduction, just by the way. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? The road is by any I, other name. I was being <laughs> load reduced at the time. Um, before I do so, I would like to point out to Francois Paulus Senecal, he's asking what the point of taking small liberties away are. And that is that when you take small liberties away, it makes it easier to take the bigger ones away. That's what the Nazis did to the Jews, and look what happened to them. And I know that people are going to say, oh, you can't compare it. I'm talking they started with very small liberties, and it expanded. Mm -hmm. right? Things like you can't own shops on this high street. You have to wear a star. You know, that was one. You, yeah. you just have to wear a star. That was one of the things. They were required to wear something. Right? You know? yeah. Anyway. I'm just um, always a bit scared about so Drawing those kind of parallels. <laughs> Don't mention the war. Don't mention the war. <laughs> you started it, no. Um, but I mean, I, I just have to say that you have to look at at those things. But to get to get to the point, what I what I would have done at history, what I would have done is I would have removed the alcohol ban completely because I think it's a total waste of time. I don't have a problem with a curfew between nine and four a.m. because seriously, what the fuck are you doing out after nine a nine p.m. anyway? Okay, just go home, right? OK, I wouldn't have introduced bans on your right to go and see your family, for example, because that's just ridiculous, because at the moment, what, what, they, what it is doing is it's forcing you to the casino where you can sit and you can play blackjack with your mother while you discuss you know, next week's laundry. You know, those, mm. those are all ridiculous, ridiculous things. Um, I will say this, right? President Sir, Sir Amposa and the entire NC government are in a very difficult spot. We need to take into account people are going to die. People are going to die because this virus kills people. People are going to die because South Africa has a massive HIV population. Its immune systems are compromised. People are going to die. We need to accept that. That's why they've got 1.4 million uh, graves already dug in Gauteng. You know, they're not, you know, stop shying away from it. You know, stop making BS regulations, all right, and actually tell people the truth and say, listen, there's nothing we can do. People are going to die. You want to protect yourself? Fine. You do the smart thing. Protect yourself. Sanitize. Keep your mask on. Don't go to parties. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the government's think... job to regulate it, but it is the government's job to provide us with information so we can protect ourselves. All right? This is not a criminal yeah. matter. It's a social I, matter. I want to... And in closing, Grant? I definitely want to add on to this one. Um... I, I do agree that um, my my biggest thing that I've noticed when I've been driving on the street throughout all this pandemic is we are not succeeding because the average South African on the street is not understanding what proper um, hygiene and, and safety protocols are. Um, I, I have seen many many a South African walking with the mask under the chin or just pulled under the nose. Um, and if I were to do this from the beginning, um, look, nothing spreads quicker than an idea. We are living in an age where viral 
where viral is a term outside of of biology, if you will. Mm, yeah. And so what I would have done, and okay, yes, I'm a little swayed because I am a performer, is I would have approached performers, actors, comedians, influencers, and started a major campaign trying to spread to the people while we were in the beginning of the lockdown, while movement was restricted, and just getting education driven out there. People, people are dying and getting unnecessarily sick because they are they're going out, they're wearing gloves, they're putting the mask on, they've got a face shield on, but they're still pulling the mask down to pick their nose with the glove on. You know, the, people, people are getting sick because they're not realizing that when they go into a public place and they touch a surface, that they can't touch their face afterwards. They're not understanding the problem with contact spreading. And also on top of this, it's, it's a semi-airborne virus, if not completely airborne virus. People are exhalating droplets into the air, which are being spread around in enclosed spaces. If you're sitting in a taxi, okay. it's not about taking the money away from the taxis. It's the fact that a taxi is a confined space that is warm and full of moisture. And it's a perfect breeding ground to spread disease. And, and, and that's, and that's the problem. That's, that's what I would have done differently anyway. That's what, but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we're just a bunch of, of rich white guys complaining on the internet. We're not really going to be able to change this. We can give our opinion and people can talk with us and all that stuff. But Grant, if you feel that you can't... <laughs> just have to let it run its course, guys. If, if, you, if you don't feel like you can make a difference from the position that you're in right now, then, my friend, you are lost. You can make a lot of difference. It's, it's, it's up to how you make that difference yourself and every person that's watching and us for. If you feel that you are useless, then you are useless. It's just what it is. You can go out there and you mm. can teach people. You can go out there and you can help people. You can go out there. At the end of the day, you're a rich white guy sitting there in your space if you think that you've lost a battle you've lost a battle my friend so i don't think you should be that hard on yourself at the end of the day you can do a lot that's what i'm going to say perhaps, perhaps what our job Guys, here keep, keep your masks is on man. keep your masks on education mm. where the government has failed to right okay and criticize enforcement where the government has stepped over the line yeah, yeah. um guys I, I have to say, unfortunately, I have to pull this one. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, thank you so much. We've had like an awesome number of viewers watching us throughout the entire show. I can promise you, not every episode is like this. We we flip flop. Sometimes we have serious political discussions, and sometimes we're just and, laughing. And at can memes can we and, do and can, can, can can we do ma music mashup though? Because I'm kind we, of excited we to have end off with something fun and exciting. Yes. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just, let's just wait to our regular <laughs> content. We are not a political show. We are actually an entertainment <laughs> show. So welcome sure. to Monday where we have our music Monday music mashup. We play just you an one late, second bro, just an hour five late. songs. <laughs> just an hour late. Um, we play you one second of five songs. And Matt has some clues for us as well. And please, just... <laughs> Let's 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 just take this bullshit and go. Oof. And let's just Jesus get some wheels. Let's move over. <laughs> um. <laughs> here we so, are. What is our music are. mashup, Matt? Here are your love for music mashup. Um, you're gonna love me because all of the songs in the music mashup today have to do with alcohol or drinking. Oh, by the way, um, <laughs> uh, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna play the the old USSR anthem for us five times over. Because that's what I'm now. <laughs> Not quite. Go maybe it. maybe that'll be next week. But here you go. Here are your here are your five songs. I get no okay, I definitely have two, three, and four. Yeah, there are a couple that are that are pretty easy in there. Uh, uh, guys, join in on on the fun. If you can guess the songs and give us all the correct answers, you will get a lap dance from me. How's which that? which one are, which one are you gonna go for, Grant? Which is the one that you are hundred percent sure of? Like a hundred. Well, definitely, definitely. Two and four. 
Yeah, f- I've got four, Definitely. five. Four, five is good. Four, five. Do you want to hear I it again? Three, I yeah. know three and four. If you like, I get no. Okay, I've got oh, four, five. I've got, three, well. I've got, I've got two, three, four, five. I've got. I, I just don't know okay. the answers. Oh, yeah. Oh. Give it. Give I, us I thought, clues for one. For one. Okay. Number one was originally written. Uh, for a 1927 play called Little Mahogany and used what? again in 1930 for an opera called Rise and Fall of the City of Mahogany. Whoa. <laughs> give, it, give us better clues, Matt. Give us better clues. I am stumped. <laughs> I'm assuming that the song has the name Mahogany in it is all no. I've got from that. Oh, no. well. No. Then okay, here's, 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 here's another one for you. One of the original lines in the song was, show me the way to the next pretty boy. Hmm. Show me the way to the next pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Francois, I, I agree. It totally gave it away. Now I totally know what number one is. <laughs> if you... <laughs> If if you had studied your drama history, you would know what I'm talking about. Mate, I no. scraped through on my drama degree on the bones of my ass. How do you think I'm going to get this one right? <laughs> you disappoint like, me, all of you. Shame. Uh, Shame. I mean, what is it? I got through drama because I know how to reference. Like, that's yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm. Okay. I never actually read what right. I wrote. All right. What is number one? Well, you got to give it to us. To have you, if, if you would like to know, by the way, Bowie also did a cover of number one. Uh, because he was a massive oh, okay. fan of the original playwright who wrote it. Okay, so it was William Shakespeare. I don't know. Uh, we've got <laughs> a guess, five Red Red Wine by UB40, um, four Tub Thumping by Chumbawamba. That is 100% correct. Um, Brendan, Brendan could say you have to give us which number is Pina Colada, but I think you mean number three. Because I think, I think uh, that's yeah. what it is, too. I, I, will, I will say this. I will say this. Here. You are technically correct, but that is not the proper name of the song. Yeah. If you like the, the, the song is actually called, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Escape. Uh, that is yeah. correct. Yeah. It, it, it also, funny enough, on um, the awesome v- mix volume one in um, yes. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. yes. I think yeah. it's the fourth song. Yeah, it, Rupert, in fact, Rupert, Rupert, in Rupert fact, Holmes. It has been featured on Shrek, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Always Sunny in Philadelphia, amongst others. Yeah. Oh, oh my one. gosh. You know what? I think we need to reveal it because we're starting to run out of time. What is, what, is the, what is number one? Just tell us what number one is. It's killing me. <laughs> number one, Blame okay, it on I'll the tell alcohol you. by T-Pain. Yeah. <laughs> Blame <laughs> it on the goose. You got you feeling loose. Blame it on the throne. <laughs> Got you in the zone. Blame it on the a- See that? A- 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 alcohol. See that in the opera in the fifties. God, I'd love, yeah. I'd love to see that. Uh, especially if you know the band that I'm talking about. He did it. All right. Do you want to see the answers for this? For this I, I'm, week? I'm chopping uh, it. Sorry, bit. I really sorry, want to. See. Sorry, the other one is the champs tequila. That is correct. Uh, the tequila that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if you want to, if you want to know a few other Champs. facts, the Champs Tequila was released in 1958. It became a number one hit on pop and R and B charts at the time. By the way, R and B, R and B, which gives you an idea of how advanced R and B was back in that day, because yeah. this is what they all sound like. So the Show first one is the, the Doors Whiskey the Bar, whiskey which was originally bar. written by Bertolt Brecht. Oh, oh. No? oh. what? Yeah. 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 Number two is indeed the champs with tequila. Um, it is based on a Cuban mumbo beat, by the way. Uh, number three is Escape by Robert Holmes. Oh, by the I've way, I've never seen this man. Look at him. I know the most <laughs> likely dude to be singing uh. about running away with some chick. <laughs> if you run away, why did he kidnap him? This man kidnapped that person. Yeah. Number four is Chumbawamba with Tub Thumping. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, great song. The theme song for FIFA 98. And number five is Red Red Wine by UB40. Um, in, in, um, by the way, that is a cover because the original Red Red Wine was written by Neil Diamond. I didn't yeah. know. 
And in fact, wow. Neil Diamond has said that of all of the covers, UB40s is his favorite. Okay. It's a jab. Yeah. It's a jab. Another, yeah. another, another fun, fun fact about Chumbawamba's tub thumping. Uh, it spent three consecutive weeks at number two on the UK singles chart. And it was held off the number one spot by Will Smith's Men in Black. Remember that tune? Uh, that was also a winner. It was a banger, yeah. I totally agree. I just remember that song, that sub thumping song, is because it was the theme song that was played at the beginning of the FIFA 98 World Cup edition. Yeah. Uh, where you had the little that chicken, was my... was the, yeah, the chicken <laughs> that I kicked the yes. soccer ball, and yes. that was the song that played. Yes, that yes. was my that was my third clue for Trumbull Wamba, the winner of that game. Because apparently I made it too easy. Um, if I remember correctly, it was a PS1 game, and the chicken was because the World Cup was in France. And of yeah, course, it was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was exactly it. Well, by the way, I just Guys, want to point out number three, Matt. Number three, where you're saying that he would be he would be kidnapping or he's the unlikely person to run away with somebody. Let's, let us remember that it was through a newspaper personal advert, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, which is basically like meeting people online. So, but, you know, but I mean, like the opening lines of that song is, "Oh, I was getting bored with my with my girls, so while she was sleeping one night, I checked out the classifieds and found this girl who wants to run away to the, some beach." And I'm like, you know, "Dude, you are like the squarest looking bastard in the world." This this yeah. is a very good idea. This is a very good idea for a show. A very good idea for a show is to find out what the lyrics of some songs actually mean, because there are some out there. Do you remember that song by the Kinks? Lola. Yes. I met her in a pub down in Nottavo, where you drink that song. Now, if, yeah. you, if you listen to the lyrics quite uh, attentively, you'll find that he's actually singing about a tranny. It's a full song written about falling in love with the tranny at a bar. Because the, the whole thing is like, I'm not dumb. Why I can't understand why she walks like a woman but talks like a man. Oh, my Lola. I'm not. Then the next line is. Oh, I need to listen I, to that song again. I'm not, I'm not the world's most physical guy. But when she squeezed me tight, she nearly broke my spine. Oh, my Lola. It's 100% <laughs> written about meeting a dude in a bar somewhere in the Caribbean or like in South America. Go and listen to it. It's very good. Have you seen the, the, first, the I think it's the second. No, it's the first, the first, uh, the first um, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Where he meets the sealer in a bar and he's quite enjoying a company and then he gets whispered in the ear. That's so a dude, bro. <laughs> grabs, grabs the lady by the crutch. Turns out to be, crutch turns out to be a, a dude. Yes. And he's like, oh, oh. Yeah. That's not a knife. <laughs> Speaking of deception and theater, I think it's time that I just quickly punt our charity because we have run out of time for the evening. Yes, we have. Um, how's that for a little segue? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, if you enjoyed Duck and COVID, um, we, I must say, like, uh, a good portion of our team are actually. Uh, crew that work backstage for theaters and productions. So this is the charity that we are endorsing and that is People for Purpose that are raising funds for the crew backstage on film sets and on stages across South Africa. They don't qualify for UIF because they are contract workers just as actors are. So if you have enjoyed the show and it, or even if you haven't enjoyed the show, which is another point, um, if you have money, that you want to donate to, to a worthy cause, please. <laughs> you're going to be helping tax, people out. Tax exemption. Tax exemption. <laughs> yes. There we, yeah, go. Yeah. there we go. Yeah. Tax right loophole. Back. Tax loophole. <laughs> Not in this country. <laughs> keyword, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us tomorrow. We're on at seven o'clock, um, Monday through Friday until the end of July, and then we have some stuff in store for you. But you'll have to stay around to find out what. Thanks, everybody. Stay sane. Stay safe. Stay sexy. Stay sexy.